Let's get started on your day three notes of transformations of functions. And today we're going to be talking about transformations of parent functions. So we're going to use the transformation we learned in the previous two lessons to transform the parent functions that we've learned. When applying transformations, you have to remember to follow the order of operations. Horizontal changes occur first. Horizontal changes occur first as they are considered inside the function. So you'll remember a lot of the horizontal changes were f of like 2x, okay? They were inside the parentheses or f of x minus 2. Then your vertical changes occur next as they are considered outside the function. Each parent function that we're going to talk about today will have a reference point. Make sure you show where this point has moved, draw the general shape of your new graph, and include any necessary information such as an asymptote. So let's move on to our first transformation of the linear parent function. So our reference point with our parent function is at 0, 0. Our parent linear function goes through our origin at 0, 0 and a perfectly diagonal line like this with a slope of 1. So our reference point is at 0, 0. If I want to transform this linear function into this function right here, y equals x plus 4, what is this plus 4 going to do to my function? It's going to move it up 4 units. That is a vertical translation up 4 units. So I'm going to take that reference point at 0, 0, and I'm, I'm going to move it up 4 units, and the entire thing moves up four units. So that's where my new transformed function is. Let's move on to the next function, our quadratic function. So our reference point is at zero, zero, and our quadratic function looks like this. It looks like a u. And then I have a function that looks like this, x minus two, which is in parentheses, squared plus one. So let's go over to these notes over here. The horizontal changes are inside the parentheses, and those occur before squaring. So this x minus 2, what do you think we're going to be doing to our parent function? Would we move it right to or left to? So we know that horizontal change affects it by x minus h. So that minus 2, we're actually going to be moving right to. So our, our reference point is going to move right to. Now your vertical changes are shown outside the parentheses and those will occur after the squaring. So this plus one, that's our vertical change. What is that gonna do to our quadratic? It's gonna move it up one. So let's change our, or let's move our reference point first and then we'll go from there. So our reference point, we're gonna be moving right two and up one. We're not reflecting it, so it's not gonna be opening down um, across the x-axis or anything like that. Um, we're not reflecting it, so um, it's just going to open up. These were just translations. We're not changing the um, how wide or how narrow our graph is. We're not doing any stretches or compressions, um, just horizontal and vertical translations. So we're not going to go over the cubic function, which is uh, y equals x cubed. But those will the y equals x cubed, our cubic function, will follow the same general guidelines. So if I had something like y equals x minus 2 cubed plus 1, well, I'm going to do the same thing. It's just my parent function it looks different. It's that cubic parent function. So it's a different shape. But I'm still going to move that reference point, which is still at 0, 0 for your cubic function, right to and up 1. Let's move on to our next function, the absolute value function. So our reference point for the absolute value function is at 0, 0, and it looks like this. It looks like a V. And so you're going to treat these bars right here, they act as parentheses, right, our absolute value bars. So the horizontal changes are going to occur inside those absolute value bars, and any vertical changes are going to occur outside those absolute value bars. So what's happening to this particular function? Well, x plus 3 in the absolute value bars, 
is actually going to move it left three. And then right here, this negative out in front, that's actually a reflection because it's outside of my absolute value bars. It's a reflection across the X axis. So reflects across the X axis. And then right here, we're actually moving down one. So this is actually going to look like this. I'm going to move left three and down one. That is my vertical shift, or I'm sorry, my horizontal and vertical shift. And then instead of opening, so that's where my new reference point is. And instead of opening up in a V, it's going to open down because it's actually going to be reflecting across the X axis. So it's going to flip, but it's, it's not reflecting across the X axis because we've translated it, we've moved it, but it's gonna open down. So let's move on to our next function, transformations of square root functions. So our reference point for the square root function is at zero, zero, and it takes on this shape, does that right there. So the square, the radical, is going to, or the square root symbol in this case, is going to act as your parentheses. So anything that occurs underneath your radical is going to be your, hor your horizontal change, and anything outside your radical is going to be your vertical change. So looking at this function in here, this x minus 5 is underneath the radical, so we're actually going to be moving right or left 5. We're going to be moving right five and then anything outside the radical is our vertical change so this plus two is going to be what up to so we're going to take that reference point that's at zero zero and we're going to move it right five and up to and that's where our new reference point is we haven't done anything else to our function so it's just going to take that same general shape from there and it's important to note that the same guidelines also apply to your cube root functions. So your cube root function looks like this, and it's going to look the same, right? So if I transform that cube root function, it might look like the cube root of x minus 5 plus 2. And I would do the same thing. Um, my reference point is still at 0, 0. And I would still take that reference point and move it right five and then up to, but the shape of my, my cube root function is different. Okay, so it's going to still take on that general shape, but that reference point at zero, zero, I'm still moving right five and up to. So let's move on to our next function, our exponential function. So in this function, our reference point is at zero, one. That's our reference point. And our asymptote is the x-axis. And y equals e to the x is just the equation that I'm using for this example. You might also see y equals 2 to the x, okay? But e to the x is what we're using, our natural base. So the let's look over here. In this little box, the horizontal changes occur in the exponent. So in the exponent right here is where our horizontal changes are going to occur. So x minus 3, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't even draw my graph, kind of looks like this, kind of takes on that shape, right? That is our exponential function. So our reference point's at 0, 1, and I'm back over here to this equation, y equals e to the power of x minus 3 minus 1. So the horizontal changes occur inside the exponent, so that x minus 3, what are we going to do with that reference point? We're going to move it right three. And then that minus one, that's a vertical change. So what are we doing there? We're going to move down one. So I'm going to take that reference point. Now the reference point is at zero one. Our asymptote is the line y equals zero. It's on our x-axis. So if I take that reference point, which is at zero one, and I move it right three, and then down one, right three and down one. Now it's actually on our x-axis and y equals negative one is actually the new asymptote. So we're not stretching it, compressing it, we're not flipping it or reflecting it across 
um, the x or y axes, or I guess it wouldn't be reflected across the y axis, but right here, this is what our function is going to look like. So let's move on to the next function. We only have two more to go. Transformations of logarithmic functions. Your reference point is at one, zero. So it's a point on your x-axis. Your asymptote is right here. It's the line x equals zero. It's your y-axis. And your function kind of looks like this. Whoop. So when, and actually this equation right here, y equals the natural log of x. So it's just, I'm just using the natural log. So you might also see something like this, log of x. Okay, and we'll just talk more about log of x and natural log of x when we get into logarithmic functions and we dive into them deeper. So horizontal changes occur inside the parentheses for a logarithmic function and vertical changes occur outside the parentheses. So let's look at our transform function. Y equals the natural log of X minus two plus three. So my horizontal changes occur inside the parentheses. That X minus two, what are we doing to our parent function? We're moving it right to, and then outside the parentheses, that plus three, what are we doing? We're moving it up three. So remember, our reference point's at one zero. I'm gonna take that reference point and I'm gonna move it right two and up three so that this is my new reference point. And I should actually probably be writing the new reference point there, three, three. But that means my asymptote is right here at x equals two, that's the new asymptote. And it's still gonna take on that same general shape. It's just that's where our function has shifted to. So let's move on to the last function that we're gonna talk about, the rational function. So a rational function, your reference point is at zero, zero, and it's actually the intersection of the asymptotes. So that is the point that we're gonna be focusing on and the point that we're going to be moving. And my parent rational function looks like this. It kind of takes on this general shape. Ooh, I could probably have drawn that a little better, but whatever. Okay, in quadrants one and quadrant, quadrants one and three. So in your rational function, the horizontal changes occur in the denominator with x. So right here is where horizontal changes are, gonna, are going to occur. x plus one, what does that mean? Are we taking that reference point and moving right one or left one? We're gonna move left one. And then your vertical changes occur outside the fraction. So plus three is our vertical change and we're moving up three. So let's take that reference point that was at zero, zero, and we're gonna go left one and up three. That's our new reference point, which means that is where the intersection of the asymptotes is, right here. And we haven't changed anything else to our function, so it's like we've basically divided this up into four like new quadrants, if you will. And so our function is shifted to be this right here. And that concludes your notes over transformations of parent functions. I hope it was helpful.